This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's small engine repair, what we're going to do, I've got a few two cycle items that I've been asked to get going for customers and uh, got a bunch of hypo carb kits that we're going to put on these things. So uh, it's going to be, you know, uh, how many can we get running with hypo carb kits? These things are great. Uh, they have been a partner with the channel for many, many years now, probably over three years, and I've uh, used a lot of their products. Again, with any aftermarkets, they can be hit and miss, but I'd probably say 90 to 95% of the time, I never have an issue with them. And also, their product support is great. The people that work behind the scenes for them are great as well. We have two Manus tillers that we need to put these carb kits on. But we also have this Ryobi weed trimmer that I'm putting, uh, doing a carb kit and fuel lines and stuff to get it back going again. It's about 10 years old. And y'all know that the diaphragms and gaskets and stuff after a certain number of years, they end up uh, getting hard and the carb can end up getting clogged and you need to get fuel lines and stuff too. Um, so it kind of depends on what carb kit you buy, whether you get fuel lines or not. But we're going to just, I'm going to show you how to replace the carb on these and uh, just see if they're going to get back going again. So, um, again, thanks Hypo for uh, being a partner of the channel. I bought these on my own. I just like doing videos for them because they do give me a bunch of free stuff and they have really good deals. Just catch them on a good a time where they have really, really good deals. I think these carburetors were 10 bucks or so, no more than $12. They were half off, 60% off, and uh, I got a bunch more uh, over here as well for a tiller um, and a couple of other items. So let's go ahead and get started on the Ryobi, and then we'll hit up the Manus tillers, see if we can get these two cycles back going and back to the customer. So to get started here on this Ryobi, uh, i trying to remember what model number this is. It is a... Uh, RY28141 weed trimmer. We've got a carb kit here. Uh, this one did not come with fuel lines, but I've got a plethora of fuel lines here uh, at home. But it did come with gaskets and a fuel filter, which we will be using. So um, what we need to get this off, we took the air filter off, cover off. I think I've already discarded the air filter because it was uh, a little bit too... Um, it was starting to fray and uh, wear out. So we're going to get uh, some T, it looks like T20s. Uh, and get these taken off here. That's a 2014 model year and Kind of looks like it's been used pretty good. Yeah, before I ordered carb kits for these, I made sure that they started on um, carb spray. So, not carb spray, two cycle mix. Don't, don't spray carb spray down into the throat of a two cycle carb. That's a great way to wash the cylinder walls out. I have, my, I have a little can of two cycle mix that I do this with. Makes it a lot easier. So, so we'll pull this off and then we'll pull the fuel lines off too and these fuel lines are starting to just rot and break off as they are already all right so I can't even get that off and this one right here was already expanded enough to where I couldn't get it off so let me get some uh, clips here we're replacing the fuel lines anyways 
but just to give y'all an idea so we got that off again like I said these fuel lines like to corrode on on us um, so what I'm gonna do because it's more about the replacement of the carburetor but I'm gonna get these fuel lines off probably just gonna cut them or let me just cut them right here at the top Okay, then I'll get some of these angle pliers here. And pull this down. And out. Same thing with this one. We can get in there for it. push it down then we can fish it out now hopefully there we go all right so I've just got to get some new fuel lines for it and a filter. I'm going to slide those in. A lot of times what I do is I take angle cutters, cut them in, cut an angle in, in these fuel lines like this, and then slide that in, grab some pliers, grab them angle pliers there that I have, and go in there and slide it down. So it doesn't really matter what side they should, on this should be the same side. What does matter is how it goes into the carburetor. So the inlet, which is this one here on this one, and uh, is what comes from the fuel filter. And then the outlet is the uh, what goes back into the tank, if that makes any sense. So grab fuel lines, get that set up, and then we'll put the carb back on. All right, so I got the fuel lines in. I gave a little bit of extra just in case I need to cut. Uh, it's kind of like a haircut. You don't want to go too short, right? So again, we're just going to test if I remember right. So this is the output line here. And then this is the input line. So I'm going to put the throttle onto, which, which one was it? Looks like it went on the this one for the for this the output line goes right there the input line is going to go right there and uh, well, that's essentially how it's going to be right we need to put some gaskets on it though let's see so we've got this gasket will be the one that goes on the back side here. Oh, let me pull this up just a tiny bit because I didn't quite give it quite enough room. I thought I had put, uh, there was no gasket on this side, so. Although I can put one, we might do that. All right, there. And then this one. Good deal. So we will T20 this back. I 
Them allergies are kicking this time of year. But T20s get them nice and snug. Nice and snug. Perfect. Okay. Oh, I think I went too I think I went too short on this line. That's uh unfortunate. I did. Well I will uh remedy that real quick and uh be right back with y'all as I put this uh line on. Actually if y'all want to see me, I'll show y'all what I do. And just do a big cut. And you can slide it down in there. This one's being a particularly difficult one. Alright, so what I do is I just slide it down in here. I thought it would given me enough room to do this. Looks like this one's going to be easy for me. Some of them are a little bit more difficult, but this one looks like it's going to be easy. So let's do that. I just literally slid it down there. These Ryobis are relatively easy to do, which is nice. And I don't mind leaving them a little bit too long, because like I said, you'd rather be a little bit long than a little bit short. So and now we should be able to pump some fuel up here. And it is pumping. I think I need to top off the fuel. Put this air filter in. Air filter is not an exact fit, but it will work. And these are, are these adjustable? Yeah, right here on the front. Some of these kits that you get will also include a, a an adjustment tool with them. This one's like a slotted one. And I'll link an, an adjustment tool kit from Hypa down in the description. Um, it's, if you have a two cycle, it's always good to have one of these in your arsenal. Alright guys, I've given this a few primes. It has enough gas to start in it. We'll move it down to the start position. First pull, how about that? a little flooded I think the other car was leaking through the uh, needle and seat pretty good it does need a little bit of adjusting I think maybe just a little bit more throttle on the bottom end
kind of wants to work, but that's all of them, right? All right, good deal. So that's that one. We're going to let it sit, sit out, make sure everything works on it. And then what we've got next, you can see we've got, it's busy time around here. Uh, these two Manus tillers here that we're going to take care of next and just see if we can get those running uh, and be a three for three on the hypa uh, carb swap kits all right now it's time to work on this manis uh looks like we have a little bit of junk in this gas tank which we need to take care of yeah that's pretty that's actually pretty bad so what you what you don't want to do is get everything fixed. Wow. A lot of times what you gotta do is just spray the mess out of it with carb spray. Let it soften up and then get it out of there. But uh, I do know this one runs on starting fluid as well, so um, works for us, right? So these covers are always in bad shape, it seems. Uh, get a couple of screws out here, and we will oh, there we go. Screw number one and screw number two. I like these because the choke lever is actually a part of the uh, air filter assembly as opposed to the carburetor. So it makes these a little bit easier to um, remove and fix. You just have to slide the carb out of the throttle and you can see these, these uh, lines are just gone. So... There's uh, not that much of that I can do with the tank the way that it is. I do need to just, it's just a couple of screws to get it out as well. So. Alright, let's see if we can do this. Of course those screws are going to be the ones that are difficult. Oh, there's one. But I do want to show you all the hypa kit that we're going to put in here. I think there may be a couple of screws on the bottom that we've got to take out too. Yeah, there's one on the bottom, which I'm going to take out. And we're just going to, like, like I showed y'all, spray a little bit of carb spray. into this a lot of times what that'll do is it'll soften up the uh, I don't know if y'all can see in there but it'll soften up that varnish you just kind of slosh it out and get it out and uh, should be good I may be able to dilute it a little bit with some gas but we'll just take off that um, I guess it actually looks good there but in order to get off the uh, fuel lines here, I have to lift this up. I mean, this thing is just trashed. Sometimes a little bit of WD-40 helps get this out too, but either way, this has got to come out so that we can put the new new stuff in. But the, like I said, these fuel lines are just toast on this thing. 
So the gasket here, or the what will this be? The actual carburetor. Which one do I have open here? Right here. And here's the here's the kit that it comes in. So we've got this. We've got all of our lines here. And they just literally fit right down into here. Fuel filter and everything just fits right down in there, which we'll fix or we'll get all sorted whenever we uh, clean this fuel tank out. But uh, there's the old one. There's the new one. Obviously, they look whoops, very similar to each other. And this one right here is pretty much trashed. Um, just like the Ryobi that we just did, your return line is probably coming out the top, right, right there, coming out the top. So that will plug into that, and then your black line is going to plug into the bottom because it's going to suck up through the fuel filter. So let me get the uh, gas tank off here. I'll get that all cleaned out. We'll put it on. I got the gas tank back on. Again, it was just three screws to get it off and get it back on. I think a lot of that, I don't know, I think a lot of the old fuel lines and stuff had started breaking apart in there, and so it was having issues. Uh, just a bunch of junk and debris. I've gotten as absolute much as I can out of it, uh, and hopefully we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and put all this in now. Um... This is a little bit of a tight fit, so you might want to put a little bit of WD-40 on it. Just to see if we can slide it in a little bit easier here. Just make life a little bit easier for everybody. Hopefully. Just have to be careful, like if you try and use a screwdriver here. You just want to get it down in there and if you could get one side in there then you can kind of work the other side in here It's always, these are always really tight, but they're really tight for a reason because you don't want them to. Uh, uh, you don't want them to come out and cause issues with fuel leaking. So let's see if we can get, get it in there. always a task always a task to do this but it's part of the process so I'm going to show you all that process as long as I can get it <laughs> sometimes what you got to do it's it's a little bit more difficult to do it this way but take a line out and put it in after the fact but um, These are always, like I said, these are some of the hardest to get in. So I'm going to work on this. I'll get it in. I'll let you know the difference, and then we'll get this carb on. So the job gets much easier after you turn the camera off, right? As soon as I turned it off, of course, I got it right back in there. So uh, that gasket, I don't really want to interrupt that gasket right there. But uh, there's a little area on the top. You just slide this into and then again the top portion the yellow line is going to be your return line that's going to go on the top of the engine here or on the top of the carburetor and the bottom of the carburetor is going to go your supply line 
So we'll get all them firmly attached here. Slide them on nice and tight. Just like that, I guess. That'll do what we need it to do. And this is just like a little vent, like a tank vent. Just kind of make sure it's tucked out of the way. But, uh, so we'll get the uh, throttle cable on, just like that. And then there's our lines. And we'll throw uh, this on. We'll put a gasket in front of this. Since this is metal and not plastic, unlike the Ryobi one. Screw these back on. Not with that. Oh, with this. I don't know why that one's not screwing in, but. Maybe I don't have it in the slot. Oh, it looks like I do. I don't know why it's not going in for me. But. That's the, that's the premise of putting it on. I don't, like I said, I don't know why it's not tightening down for me on the bottom there because we just did this. But, uh, we should be uh, good to go now. There we go. I don't know why it wasn't tightening there for, the, for a second. But, air filter, and then... Always get uh, mixed up as to how this goes like this. The other one that I have here to fix does not have anything, does not have this cover, so we're just gonna cut out a piece of plastic, find a nut that works, and make this one work. So I uh, just need to get some fuel mix in this now. Uh, that's how you do it. Uh, that one gave me a little bit of a fight, but that's okay. We will. Uh, be all right and I'm gonna push this line down a little bit further into the tank and grab it from the inside and there we go so we're all straight now we'll get some gas in this uh, fuel mix in it and we'll see if we can get this one started and be uh, two for three so far or two for two so far since we haven't worked on the third one all right let's see if we have any success here with this We'll prime it for a few primes here. Got the choke on. Make sure that it's uh, switched on. And it is. We've got to sneeze here, guys. Excuse me. Yet. See if this, see what we can do here. 
was the one that seemed like it was a tiny bit low on compression so it's possible that that is ooh, it's not spark issue I know that it's related to that so I'm gonna keep on uh, working on this and see if we can get it to kick off I may just have it it may just simply be too uh, flooded so I'm gonna pull the plug make sure it looks good and uh, we'll go from there well uh, swap the spark plug out with the one that was provided and that ended up being it the plug was fouled in it um, so I'll show you here concerned about I, I was able to get it to start even with the old plug on uh, fuel mix and but it doesn't feel like it's got as much compression as the other one that I'm about to work on literally the one I'm about to work on and I'll show it to y'all trying to thin the pile here of repairs luckily I'm getting there these have been sitting for a little bit uh, this one here feels stronger which is good to me but you can see it's got varnish and stuff here on the outside of it as well and uh, looks like we might have to do the same thing to the inside here yeah because you can see inside it's got that junk in there as well so I've got to pull do basically this is the exact same tiller as the one we just fixed I'm gonna do the exact same thing to that machine or to this machine right here no need for me to show it to y'all twice but we'll get that taken care of and uh, we'll see if this one runs as well. wanted to note one thing if you're doing these Manus Tiller carbs because this is the second one. The first one I didn't have to deal with because this did not come off. But this choke flap right here actually has a washer in it that goes uh, underneath it so to speak. And so you have to get it like that. There's a washer underneath, and then you can thread everything back. I was that's the issue, or that's what I was having issues with just a second ago. Um, so we'll sandwich this back together. I basically had to do the exact same thing to this one as the other one in terms of like spraying out the carb and things along those lines. So um, let me get this all in here throttle cable etc and um, gasket we'll slide this on I'm gonna go ahead and change the spark plug out on this one too just as preventative maintenance again people say it's a spark plug Nine times out of ten, it's not, usually. It's usually something else. 
usually a fuel related issue because I get a lot of people that come in to say hey my mower ran last year it won't run I changed the spark plug nothing helped well yeah there's usually a fuel related issue I'm not tightening these down too much with the impact I just wanted to get the thread started a little bit of extra pressure there and so in theory if I got that right there we go. Choke on, choke off. Choke on, choke off. Alright, so I just need to fabricate... Ooh, of course. Alright, so I just threaded all the gaskets and stuff on here. I forgot to move the camera again. I apologize. Choke on, choke off. That little washer gives that enough space and keeps it in the right spot. So that's good. Um, I gotta fabricate a uh, little air filter cover basically I'm just gonna cut a piece of plastic and drill a hole in it and see how that goes um, before I do that though I'll go ahead and put the gas put some fuel mix in it put the gas cap back on it we'll see if it'll run all right so the second one's finished what I did just to use as an air filter cover is I have one of them black and yellow plastic bins and just put that uh, and wedge the air filter in there and so hopefully it'll get enough air through there to uh, for it to work so um, I'm gonna prime it a few times we'll see if this works let's see oh yeah This one's probably got to be adjusted a little. That's a little bit better. I need a little bit of an adjustment maybe just a little bit maybe idled a little too low so uh, let's see if we can get it right if it'll start back up here adjustment let me get that taken care of um, and then this one should be good let's just for kicks while we're here let's check the other one make sure it's still good should just start up hopefully oh yeah tillers they're a little bit temperamental to get started so uh and but until they get warmed up and then they warm up they're pretty good so let me adjust this one just a little bit see if we can get it all taken care of and uh then we'll be all done all right guys that is everything on this video where we fix that ryobi string trimmer and the two mantis tillers with hypa carbs i also want to thank hypa uh they have sent me some t-shirts as well 
uh, large, extra large, and double XL. I will get, see if I can uh, get something going with potential if y'all want to buy some, basically for the shipping cost plus a few bucks. Um, just express either uh, email me uh, or DM me with uh, any of those links in the description uh, as to how to reach me and we can see about getting you one of these shirts, these Hypa shirts, which are really cool. It may be even updated, a um, little bit different design maybe than this, but still black Hypa shirt. Really cool to have. Got a few of them. Got a ton of them now. So, um, again, XL, large, and double XL are the sizes that I have. Let me know if you want one. We can sort it out. So, uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, three machines up with Hypa cars, which is great. Um, the two Manus Tillers, those Manus Tillers have been sitting a really, really long time. And uh, cleaning out that tank, putting that carb kit on makes them look and run like new again. And then that Ryobi string trimmer um, right off the bat just kicked on off. So really good. Like Hypa's stuff. Links in the description below for those as well. Uh, you might be lucky. You might catch some of their carb kits on some really good sales. So always keep a lookout for what they've got. So thanks again for watching. As you can see just by the garage but also by the driveway that there is a lot, a lot of machines here um, and a lot of content to come. We've got a couple of John Deere's we're gonna be working on. Um, and let's see, a Husqvarna zero turn, got a Toro zero turn in the garage that I'm finishing up, which is a fun one. And uh, hopefully y'all stick around for that. So thanks again for watching this uh, video and I'll catch y'all on the next one.